Hey, welcome and thanks for joining us for our midweek motivation. I'm Pastor Richard and today I want to talk to you about joy. And is that even possible in all this COVID-19 mess? You know, the world has a way of robbing of us our joy. And if you keep listening to the news and all this stuff about the COVID, uh, it will rob your joy. But what a delight it is to be a Christian to have a dynamic relationship with Jesus Christ and to know that you have an eternal home with Him forever. Well, in this mess of this earthly life, we sometimes allow our joy to be stolen. Well, I don't know about you, but I want my joy back, and that's exactly what Ezra chapter 6 is all about. In Ezra, the people of God are seeking to return to reopen, rebuild, and restore the temple of God. And in chapter 5, we saw their discouragement. They were really, really discouraged. And it seems like when things start to get a little better, we're hit with more information and more fear. And that has certainly been true for us in this COVID-19. But the joy that God gives to his people is the theme of Ezra chapter 6. So I hope you'll take your Bible and join me with there. But the work on rebuilding the temple had stopped for 16 years due to the opposition and the discouragement uh, from the people in the land. Then, under the prophets Haggai and Zechariah, the work resumed because God led them to encourage the people. But they had barely gotten started when this man named uh, Tadanai, the governor of the province, confronted the Jews on whether they had the proper permission to even to rebuild the temple. They told him, you know, hey, Cyrus decreed that we could do this. Uh, and so he, he allowed them to, to work. But during the meantime, he is contacting King Darius as what to do. And so that's where we're going to be at today in chapter 6, finding out in chapter 6, Darius, the king, makes a search. And eventually he finds the decree that Cyrus uh, head in the government archives and he respects that decree and he sends back a ruling that not only should the work go on it's also going to be supported by government funds and I just think that's so cool don't you I mean that is just great so the temple is completed with government money and the Lord's people they gather and they celebrate the dedication of this temple with joy and so that was followed by the Passover and the Feast of Unleavened Bread and it was all done with joy. Now Ezra explains the source of their joy. For the Lord has caused them to rejoice and had turned the heart of the king of Assyria toward them to encourage them in the work of the house of God, the God of Israel. That's in chapter 6 verse 22. So God's aim is to give great joy in him. Did you know that joy is a major theme of the Bible and God wants his people to have joy? I'm talking about real joy here. Jesus said, my joy I give unto you, not as the world gives. The Apostle Paul said, rejoice in the Lord always. Again, I say rejoice. And the Apostle Peter talked about this joy of people who believe in him, that they greatly rejoice with joy unspeakable and full of glory. So let's rediscover how we can have joy. All right, Ezra chapter 6, beginning with verse 1. Then King Darius issued a decree, and a search was made in the archives where the treasures were stored in Babylon. And at Athma, in the palace that is in the province of Media, a scroll was found, and in it a record was written thus. In the first year of King Cyrus, King Cyrus issued a decree concerning the house of God at Jerusalem. Let the house be rebuilt the place where they offered sacrifices, and let the foundations that be firmly laid, its height 60 cubits and its width 60 cubits, with three rows of heavy stones and one row of new timber. Let the expenses be paid from the king's treasury. Also, let the gold and silver articles of the house of God, which Nebuchadnezzar took from the temple, which is in Jerusalem, and brought to Babylon, be restored and taken back to the temple, which is in Jerusalem, each to its place, and deposit them in the house of God. Now, therefore, Tadanai, governor of the region beyond the river, and Shethar and Banzai, and your companions, the Persians who are beyond the river, keep yourselves far from there. Let the work of this house of God alone. Let the governor of the Jews and the elders of the Jews build this house of God on its site. Moreover, I issue a decree as to 
you shall do for the elders of these Jews, for the building of this house of God. Let the cost be paid at the king's expense from the taxes on the region beyond the river. This is to be given immediately to these men, so that they are not hindered. And whatever they need, young bulls, rams, and lambs for the burnt offerings of the God of heaven, wheat, salt, wine, and oil, according to the request of the priests who are in Jerusalem, let it be given them day by day without fail that they may offer sacrifices of sweet aroma to, to the God of heaven and pray for the life of the king and his sons. Also, I issue a decree that whoever alters the, this edict, timber be pulled from his house and erected and let him be hanged on it and let his house be made a refuse heap because of this. And may the God who causes his name to dwell there destroy any king or people who put their hand to alter it or to destroy this house of God, which is in Jerusalem. I, Darius, issue a decree, let it be done diligently. Man, we experience God's joy through his providential care for us. That's the first thing I want you to see. Don't you just marvel when God steps in and his, I mean, he just, his care for you just jumps out at you. This guy, Tadani, had sent a letter to Darius, and he really was expecting the king to send back orders saying, shut the work down, don't build it. But we see God's providence in the very fact that the king finding the decree of Cyrus. Now, it had been written many years earlier, and they didn't find it in Babylon where it should have been. It was actually at Cyrus's summer residence. God's providential care is seen even further, though, because Darius did not say, hey, I don't care what my predecessor, predecessor said. I want this to stop. No, that's not what he did. Rather, he told Tad and I to allow the project. And then he goes on to say, and I want you to fund it with tax revenues. <laughs> wow, isn't that great? He decreed that anyone who violated this should have a board drawn from the house. And then they're going to be hung on that board. King Darius is serious, isn't it? Let the Jews rebuild. And if you try to stop them, I'm going to pull, pull some wood out of your house and I'm going to hang you on it. Uh, that talk about motivation. So we see here the providence of God at work. And that should be a source of our joy. God is always watching over us and watching out for us. He had it under control the whole time. You know, Jesus told us that not one sparrow falls to the ground that the Father does not know about. He even knows the number of hairs on our head. Therefore, we should not fear, but we should trust in God. We can be joyful that God is watching over us. But next of all, I want you to notice, we experience God's joy through his provision for us. Now, can you imagine how hard it must have been for this guy uh, to have to give this money to the Jews to finish the temple? I mean, he didn't even want the temple built. Now, not only is he having to allow it to be built, he's having to give money from the government to help them do it. And I'm sure he didn't want to do that. So they gave the money to the Jews to rebuild the temple. And, uh, and it's a temple they didn't want to see rebuilt. And it's just amazing how God provides for us. That reminds me of a story that I heard once about this little old lady and an atheist. And uh, they lived next door to each other. And every morning this lady would go out and she'd shout, Praise the Lord! And it just irritated uh, the atheist. And he would go out and he would holler, There is no God! Well, this goes on for quite a long time. And then one day... Uh, one morning in the middle of the winter, this old lady, little lady stepped out on her front porch and she shouted, Praise the Lord! Lord, I have no food and I'm a hungry. Please provide for me, O oh Lord. So the next morning she stepped onto her porch and there's two huge bags of groceries sitting there. She says, Praise the Lord! And said, He has provided groceries for groceries for me well the atheist jumped out of the hedge uh out of the bushes and he shouted there is no lord i bought those groceries for you well well the little old lady threw her hands up in the air and shouted praise the lord he has provided me with groceries and he made the devil pay for them so that's kind of funny you know and you think that's kind of what happened here you know and so we see how god is always providing for us and you know god provides for us some very different ways doesn't he Next, I want you to notice we experience God's joy through our service to him and for him. 
After 16 long years, the building was finally completed. All their hard work had paid off, and what a great, joyful celebration they had. You know, building programs are not easy, but a building is not the purpose. Think of the people, like in our building, who have been saved, baptized, weddings, rededications, worship services, VBS, disciples being made, life group Sunday school meeting here, friendships formed in this building. But it's not the building, but what happens in the building that gives us joy. Those are the victories that should cause us to be joyful. And, and so that's what was going to happen at the temple. God was going to meet with his people. Remember the story of John the Baptist when he was in prison? He sent two of his disciples to Jesus, and he said, Jesus, and he wanted them to ask him, to, what's going on here? Listen to what it says in Matthew eleven two through 6. It says, and when John had, had heard in prison about the works of Christ, he sent two of his disciples and said to him, are you the coming one, or do we look for another? And Jesus answered and said to them, Go and tell John the things which you hear and see. The blind see, and the lame walk. The lepers are cleansed, and the deaf hear. The dead are raised up, and the poor have the gospel preached to them. And blessed is he who is not offended because of me. I think we often forget to celebrate the victories God is doing right before our eyes. Keep serving the Lord. Lives are being changed. And let these victories give you the joy of the Lord. And then one more thing, and that is we experience God's joy by praising him together. When the temple was completed, the people gathered and they celebrated the dedication of the house of God with great joy. Their offerings were not n nearly on the grandiose scale of Solomon's dedication w that we read about in 1 Kings chapter 8, verse 63. But what they brought was a sincere offering of what they had, and that pleased God. If the church has learned anything through this COVID-19, it's not to take for granted the privilege of meeting together. I remember the first Sunday that we met back after Shelter in Place. When the first song started, some wet drops started falling down my face. <laughs> I couldn't help it. It was so good to be back in the, in the house with God's people praising and worshiping together. And I cried during most of the music portion. And I, was, and I kept praying under my breath, Lord, help me pull it together. i got to preach in a few minutes. You know, when we come together, it's a joy and an honor to worship God together. And I know some of you cannot wait to be back because you can't come back yet. So let me warn you, it may be more emotional than you expect. Because God's people, we love to be together and we love to worship Him. And see, we need to experience God's joy also through obedience to Him. In verse 14, it is stated that Israel rebuilt the temple according to the command of God. Verse 18 says, they organized their worship, listen to this, as it was written in the book of Moses. Verse 20 says, the priests and the Levites had purified themselves all together. All of them were pure. Not only the returned exiles, but verse 21 says, All those who had separated themselves from the impurity of the nations of the land joined together to seek the, Lo the Lord God of Israel by celebrating the Passover. You see, obedience sometimes is difficult at the moment, but it yields, as the book of Hebrews verse, chapter 12 verse 11 says, the peaceful fruit of righteousness. You'll always be glad that you obeyed the Lord. These folks who had not been able to worship, serve, or obey the Lord, they're now so joyful that they get to obey. There's an old hymn. Uh, I love this hymn, and it says, When we walk with the Lord in the light of His word, what a glory He sheds on our way. And while we do His good will, He abides with us still, and with all who will trust and obey. And the chorus says, trust and obey, for there's no other way to be happy in Jesus but to trust and obey. There's our joy. So why do we try to find joy apart from God? C.S. Lewis said the ultimate purpose of God in all his work is to increase joy. You know, the Westminster Shorter Catechism asked this question, what is the chief end of man? Of course, many of us know the answer. Man's chief end is to glorify God and to enjoy Him forever. 
I like the way John Piper said it. He said, the great business of life is to glorify God by enjoying him forever. Do you enjoy knowing God, loving God, and being his child? Let me leave you with a deep thought about enjoying the Lord. Over and over again in God's word, we are challenged to to joy in the ultimate person, Jesus Christ. So let me remind you of some scriptures. It says, rejoice in the Lord always. You can always rejoice in the Lord, can't you? Delight yourself also in the Lord, Psalm 37, 4 tells us. Be glad in the Lord. In your presence there is fullness of joy. This is my chosen portion and my cup. As a deer pants for flowing streams, so pants my soul for you, O God. My soul thirsts for God, for the living God. And of course, We rejoice in God through our Lord Jesus Christ than we have now received reconciliation, Romans 5, 11. And then John 15, 11, and I love this. It says, these things have I spoken to you that my joy may remain in you and that your joy may be full. So let's not just return, reopen, rebuild, and restore. Let's make sure our joy of the Lord is overflowing. Do you have the joy? Let me pray with you. Father, we thank you for all that you do for us, for your providence and for your provision and and sometimes in ways that we just did not expect, certainly like as it happened in the book of Ezra. And God, would you forgive us when we lose our joy, when we let things like the COVID-19 and all the things that were here and steal our joy? Our joy is in you. And I pray, God, that you'll help us Keep our eyes on you to get them off of the world, the things that are happening. And remember that we are to rejoice always in the Lord. And God, you are our joy. Thank you for sending your son Jesus to die on the cross that we can have everlasting life. Thank you for the promise of heaven. And thank you that you will never, ever leave us. And that gives us joy. We love you. We ask all this in Jesus' name. Amen. Hey, I'm Pastor Richard. Thanks for joining us for the midweek uh, motivation. I hope this has been a blessing to you, and I hope your joy is full.